Alright guys, a catastrophic failure of Dubai's man-made islands. Let's check it out. Dubai's man-made islands were supposed to look like this. Luxury, exuberance, and grandiosity. Instead of... What? Whoa, 20 oh. years of Yo, those are cool though, yo. Imagine just like, oh my gosh, it would be a beautiful thing to watch. Not gonna lie. It would be an amazing thing to watch. Of work and 13 billion... I mean, not, not watch, but like, be there? Like, it looks like an oasis, man. I, I live far away from the beach, if you couldn't tell. <laughs> Dollars, they make up an unimpressive scatter of sand with a few what? barely recognizable continents. Where did it all go? Damn, bro. Okay, okay. He's flaming the he's flaming their design. <laughs> I mean, if it was like, it looks like a cool little tourist destination, guys. But I'm sure everybody, uh, it. That, li that lives there is like, yo, it's not cool. Because, you know, they live there. It's, it's like a tourist destination. It's like super interesting because it's a tourist destination for a little. Only a little, right, guys? Wrong. When the idea came about in 2001, Dubai had limited coast left for waterfront property, setting into motion the plan of, well, creating more coastline through the introduction of four new coastal mega projects. There was the World Archipelago and what was supposed to have been the universe surrounding it, the Palm Dira, the Palm Jebel Ali, and finally. Yo, they even got designs, man? Yo. The Palm Jumeirah, which has since become the only successful development for a few notable reasons. Firstly, the that would be amazing to see for if you're in an airplane, guys. And they do have an airplane there. An airplane station, I guess you can call it. What is it called? Palm Jumeirah was built prior to the other projects, having been completed in 2006 before the global financial crisis. On top of this, Jumeirah was the smallest and most easily accessible of the four projects. Reminds me of like crop circles or something, right guys? Like those are super cool. Uh, recently in my videos, ever since we watched that video about New York potentially making man-made islands, I've been like, you know, a fan of it, guys, but it might not be the best thing, I guess. ...being built off the already established Al Sufu, a popular area known for being the most... Hey, hey, you know, it's like all businesses, I mean, most businesses fail, kind of, you know, ideal. Well, I don't think it... It might be true a little, but you know, it doesn't that doesn't mean it won't be true in the future, guys. Most expensive district in all of Dubai. The palm itself has been planned incredibly well, with a perfect mix of residential and commercial property, making it a self-sustaining. Oh snap! They got property on them as well. Area with so they have one successful island. It's not a catastrophic failure, right guys? At least one of them's working. Businesses for the residents. However, that's not to say that the project has been without problems. Shortly after its completion, the New York Times reported- Dude, they have so many, like, houses and stuff? OMG, that's so cool. There's a way to prevent sharks from being there. That'd be awesome. But that the Palm Jumeirah, as well as the three other mega projects, were all sinking back- like, uh, uh, you know, just going out for a swim on the island and there's no, like, dangerous waves or anything. I'd be out there in my raft, you know what I mean? ...to the ocean at a rate of 5 millimeters per year, with one article stating we're guessing... Can you even swim in there? I don't see anyone swimming, guys. ...the sand piled up from the ocean floor isn't all that good as sustaining the weight of tons of man-made structures, cars, and so forth. The island's developer, Nikhil Properties, responded to these claims by stating, The palm is intact. If there was subsidence, you would see cracks in the buildings, windows popping out. We have no evidence of that happening, even going so far as to sue the builder, Penguin Marine, who simply stated that erosion could eat away at the islands. Then there's the issue of the water itself. The three man-made palms arms were designed with a crescent on the outside, protecting the residential houses on the inside from the open ocean. Although this has since resulted in issues with water flow, essentially turning the ocean into a lake by stagnating the water within the crescent. On top of this, a study was published- It became a lake, guys. See, if they turn it to like a water park or something as well, that'd be amazing. <laughs>
<laughs> but they already made it a leak somehow. In 2022, we're discussing the Palm Jumeirah Island's construction effects on the surrounding water quality and surface temperatures, which found that the island's construction permanently changed the quality and temperature of the water, causing yet another concern from the public to do with the environment. I have so many questions though, ecological and economic concerns. Did the construction of the islands drive away marine life? Where did the brought in sand come from? And what methods did they use to make sure that the original place of the sand didn't suffer any ecological disaster? When construction began, Ecological disaster, no. Down on the islands back in the early 2000s, environmental sustainability wasn't the massive concern that it is these days. The islands were built by transporting 94 million cubic meters of sand Dang, from the seafloor, displacing marine life in the process. Wow. <laughs> Giant sand machines. Didn't expect to use that word in my life. A Duke University study from 2006, which analyzed the island's impacts on marine wildlife, found that the Palm Jumeirah has buried and asphyxiated wildlife, increased turbidity, and changed the alongshore sediment transport, while also completely... So does modern-day agriculture for all day, right, guys? But, you know, don't want to like, get any species extinct changing the wave patterns on the mainland. The 2006 WWF Living Planet report then found that at the time, the average person in the Emirates puts more demand on the global ecosystem than any other. Uh, guys, it, it is one of the richest countries in the world, guys. I'm sure there'd be a... Expanding and stuff, I don't know. Giving the country the world's largest per capita ecological footprint, owed in part to projects such as the four man made islands. Jeez, bro, it's such a huge machine, though. Islands. And if these issues. I'm sure there's wildlife that got stuck in that machine, unfortunately. If these apply to even the most successful island, then the other three unsuccessful islands must have even more problems. Take, for example, the Palm Jebel Ali to the south, which suffers from one of the most unfixable property-related issues, a terrible location. I had the chance to view the islands from the shore as they were being built. Even before viewing them in person, I could never understand why anybody would want to live in that location. The Palm Jebel Ali is located so far south of the city, its closest notable development is the Dubai Port and Industrial District, while the palm itself extends from nothing besides... Yeah, Industrial District District is... I mean, you... Guys, why would you want to visit the, there in the first place, right, guys? ...besides the already existing desert, which isn't exactly the greatest spot. The original plan for this palm included a new residential district at the entrance, however, as you can see, they never really got there. Some sand and road work has been completed on the palm, although if you look a little closer, there are signs showing that the project had to halt suddenly. For example, these broken sectors at the end of the palm indicate that they weren't quite finished laying sand. And see this little island over here to the southwest? Well, that was supposed to be another artificial island called the Dubai Waterfront, designed to combat erosion on the palm. However, as you can see, the waterfront project has also since been abandoned. Official data was published showing that Nikhil sold only 29 houses on the Palm Jebel Ali before it ceased construction in 2009. 29 houses, wow. Because no one wants to live next to an industrial district, at least, right, guys? They want to live next to a store or something. Fine. With this date hinting at the first major problem. Dubai has been hit by the global financial crisis, especially... Okay, that's not good to happen as well. In real estate. Yo, what's up, uh... What's up, Christine? Mega projects like the artificial island off the coast are in danger of collapse. Many construction sites have shut down. The global financial crisis evaporated demand for Dubai housing, with prices falling by over 60% in 2008 and 2009. Yeah, bro, 60%? What games I like to play? Um, MMORPGs. The empty Palm Jebel Ali was abandoned. Whoa, whoa. Is that like a floating, like... End end. As Dubai's lower property prices meant to kill could no longer earn enough to cover its... It's uninhabited, guys, now. But hey, it doesn't mean they might not build on it in the future, right, guys? Construction costs, which was then tied in with an even more serious problem. The developer of the man-made islands was funded by the Dubai government, which relied on oil for its income, which over a six-month period in 2008 dropped from 100 and... Well, this is way back in... 2008. Yeah, I do stream daily. $40 a barrel to $40 a barrel. This meant that on top of being unable to fetch the property prices they needed, the developers no longer had the money. 
He's talking about the, the fin financial crisis of, of way back then, 2008. Money to build the homes in the first place, and it's not like a better location offered a fix to this problem. The Palm Deira to the north was said to be Dubai's largest of the three palms, possibly for its central location close to the city and airport. However, this project made it no further than an entrance and a small section at the tip of the crescent. For this reason, in 2013, the project was rebranded as the Deira Islands, with the goal of utilizing the half-built area to feature 80 hotels, multiple residential towers, as well as a golf course. The project should be completed in accordance with Dubai's 2040 master plan. Snap, bro. They even called it a master plan? They got 17 years to build all, the, all that they're trying to build. <laughs> At least they're real, being realistic. Which might still be sooner than the most catastrophic of the four man-made islands, the world. The 2003 promotional video for the world described it as an island paradise where unprecedented opportunity can be found before going on to state that residents and visitors will enjoy an exceptional array of retail venues. The video Oh, okay, okay. The video showed lavish green islands with prestigious villas, boats, and cafes, calling it the ultimate in exclusivity. And while this might be true to some extent, it's likely because nobody else has any desire to be there. What? Guys, this is my first time even hearing hearing about it, guys. The islands themselves look like an absolute travesty. North America and Canada are shaped like a diamond and cut off by what appears to be the North Pole, while Greenland is the same size as the North American continent, when in reality, Greenland is approximately 20 times smaller. Australia looks more like the head of a dog, while New Zealand is shaped like an archway and is missing the bottom half of the country, yet the shaping of the islands is a pretty small problem in comparison to their complete lack of development. They tried to make it look like the world, if you didn't get that, guys, like the world map. <laughs> and uh, they, they messed up a little bit architect ar ar architecturally. That's fine, that's fine. Development. Over 90% of the islands are completely empty, despite being 60% sold 15 years ago, with most being used for Google Maps advertising of computer stores, cafes, and of course, the swag like Ohio Beach. However, that's not to say that there hasn't been any construction on the islands. A $7 million house was built by the developers in the northwest corner of Greenland, which was then bizarrely gifted to the German Formula One driver, Michael Schumacher, who's never even commented on the project or given any indication that he's even visited the house. What? He gets a $7 million house? How do you do shopping though, guys? On top of this, the- You're gonna have to take a boat. Load up the boat with your groceries and stuff. Or you can get like the helicopter delivery Uber thing. <laughs> I don't know, guys. That's the island of Lebanon has been developed into a beach club, which can be used to escape the noise of the city. When it was visited by Yes Theory in their Exploring Dubai's Empty Islands video, he showed that the Lebanon island was fairly empty, yet he also noted that it was right in the middle of COVID, which likely impacted its popularity at the time. The beach club describes itself as the first... So just a house there, guys. First development to open its doors to the public, yet this might hint at why the rest of the world's islands are yet to be developed. There's nothing else around. Without any close businesses or things to do, people aren't going to build houses out there, but at the same time without any houses, business owners aren't going to go and launch a business out there. Given the isolated location, the only people to use any such business would be those already on the islands, because it's not going to be efficient for a mainlander to get on a boat and travel all the way out to the world just to buy something at a store. Even then, what kind of business are you gonna launch in the middle of the ocean with nothing else around? What's even crazier is that between 2023 and 2028, the Kiel Properties plans to develop another set of islands around the world called the Universe, which seems totally crazy given the lack of success on the existing island. Hey, they're still trying. They get participation points for trying, guys. For which a Reddit user had a different theory about their failure. My understanding is that when the master developer sold the islands, you didn't just buy a plot of sand in the sea, you bought much more. The land was sold with infrastructure and that included electricity, potable water, waste management for trash, waste management for sewage, transportation links, water taxis. When the master developer handed over the islands, they said, nope, you're on your own, none of the above. The reason why so few have built on their islands is because now they have them, they have to build their own power plants, desalination plants, water sewage treatment facilities, find someone to take all their trash, and provide all the transport to bring all their guests to and fro. For most developers, they- 
All right, that's a lot of boats. Like they gotta hire full-time staff just for boats. They don't have the experience, ability, or funding to do all the above. The only thing they could do is walk away or try to find a new buyer for their island, but knowing the current facts, who would buy them? Despite these limitations, a luxury hotel complex called the Heart of Europe has recently been completed on the European islands in the world, which has- Yo, oh snap, they're gonna- That's so cool though, like, you'd have like, uh, you know, different restaurants that have different, like, um, from all the different countries, all in one spot, guys. Isn't that amazing? Like, that, that's, a, that's an amazing idea. It has some absolutely insane features, such as a snow room, a massive sauna, and an underwater bedroom, which in a weird way shows that the project has been somewhat successful. The point of the islands was to increase Dubai's coastline and tourism by doing something unprecedented, and while only one of the four mega projects has been successful, they've certainly generated some very interesting discussion. Yo, uh, okay, okay, I like what they're doing so far. Darn, I was expecting this topic. Love you see you step out of your comfort zone experimenting even at the level you are now. Enjoy learning of any catastrophic failure takes, that takes attention away from the fact that I myself am... Yeah, me too, me too. You know what, the $7 million needs a house? I know, right? A swimming pool. They build a swimming pool. In that seven million dollar house, which makes sense because you know it's safer than the ocean. All right, guys, like, comment, subscribe, check out Sunny V2 in the description. Um, I do all my reactions live on Twitch, so if you want to come through, say hi, you're more than welcome, guys. Appreciate the support. We're, we're closing in on 6,000 subscribers, guys. So, uh, later. Peace out, everyone.